yes, so thank you everybody for um, coming to this webinar. Uh, and my portion of the talk, I will be talking about uh, organo mineral fertilizer, what it is and how to use it. Um, so a quick overview, we're going to look at what organo mineral fertilizer actually is, and then we're going to quick look at how they are produced. Uh, what are the benefits of using this fertilizer, how to use it, and what has research found. Uh, this material is pretty new. Uh, there hasn't been too much work done with this. Uh, and most of the work that has been done uh, has been done in developing countries. So I don't think there is much in the U.S. that has been done before. Uh, but because of the popularity in developing countries and the amount of research that has come up in the last five years or so, um, there has been some interest in this um, type of material. So how they are produced, um, basically you would have a manure source and you would have a dry chemical fertilizer source. And the idea is to combine these two together. Of course, if you just take a manure as it is here in this picture, and you try to mix with your fertilizer, it's going to be very messy. It's not going to work very well. So what it's done is there are a couple, um, chemi uh, not chemical, but some industrial processes that have been uh, developed where you take the manure, you dry uh, to a certain moisture content, and then you add that with a binder agent, which will allow you to mix the, the chemical fertilizer and the manure, or if you're just going to pelletize it, then the binder agent also is going to help you to produce nice pellets. Um, after this dry manure and the, the binder agent are mixed, they go into um, a bath that you add steam and water, uh, and it could also be sludge, other type of liquid materials that you want to dispose or use in this. For example, you could be using some of that UAN, if you depend on what you're doing with the material. After this mixing is done, uh, and that water gets in there really to mix all this dry manure and the dry binder agent. Uh, then this go into an extruder at very high pressure, for example, 100 psi and very high temperature, um, over 125 Celsius. Uh, and what that does is it's going to help mix everything well and it's also going to start drying this manure because once it gets to 7% moisture content, that's when you can produce pellets. Um, if you're going to produce a granulated manure mixed with fertilizer, or that's the point that you can fuse that uh, dried mixture with a, a chemical fertilizer to produce a fused organic mineral fertilizer. And here I have two pictures. Uh, the one on the left shows the pelletized manure uh, with, the gran um, with the granular fertilizer. And you can clearly see here that these pellets, this is the manure, the pelletized manure. And then the little round spheres here are the chemical fertilizer. So this is one type of material that can be produced. Uh, and you can clearly see the difference between the pelletized manure and the chemical fertilizer. Now, the picture on the, on the right, it's a different material. This is what we call the granulated manure and fertilizer. Uh, here, it's the two sources were fused together and the one granule was produced with both materials. You can see that compared to these granules here, there is difference in color. Uh, the shape's pretty similar, but there's also a lot of difference in um, the bulk density of the material because here you have more organic matter fused into the granule, whereas here you basically have just minerals. There is no organic matter fused into these little granules. The organic matter would be all separated into the pellets. Okay, uh, so what are the benefits? As Glenn mentioned, uh, there is a, uh, a lack of balance between the nutrient concentration in the manure and the nutrient requirement by most crops that we currently uh, grow. 
So for example, uh, corn grain can remove about a pound of nitrogen and 0.4 pounds of PTO5 per bushel of grain that is produced. Uh, so for example, a corn field that is producing 200 bushels of corn, it will remove about 200 pounds of nitrogen and 80 pounds of P2O5, which is between a two to three to one uh, ratio between nitrogen and P2O5. And, and this is where uh, Glenn got his numbers too. Like if you wanna be between a two, or above a two to one ratio, then you'll be providing this amount of nutrient for this crop. Now, what really happens in manure, and in here I have some examples. Uh, some swine manure, and this is liquid manure, you get right at that two, two to one, and a little bit higher. But when you start looking at more dry fertilizer, or even there in beef manure, that has, like Glenn said, there's a lot more potential for uh, nutrient and uh, nitrogen volatilization primarily because in dairy you have all those open lagoons and nitrogen will volatilize from those lagoons. Uh, so we ended up with a much lower ratio, uh, meaning that there's going to be a much severe imbalance between nitrogen and phosphorus, just like as Melissa showed in the beginning of the presentation with basing manure application on the nitrogen content will usually lead to an over application uh, of phosphorus. And here are some uh, of the formulation that has been produced with this organic mineral for fertilizer. Um, and, and with this strategy, you know, you can really produce any ratio that you want, just like with using uh, your traditional chemical fertilizer, you can produce these ratios. And now this technology can also start looking at whatever uh, ratio of nutrients that you need that would fit best with what you're producing. And then here you can see what's happening with the nitrogen to phosphorus ratio as you're changing the formulation in those nutrients. You can see that it's really starting to go up. Now, how do we use this material? Um, because everything is produced at the factory, it would all come bagged as one source. Uh, it would be the same way to use as dry fertilizer. You can um, you can broadcast into the surface, you can uh, put it on a planter and, and, and dig it in as you're planting your seeds. Uh, for example, adding to your fertilizer box. Uh, and the, one of the big advantages of this is that the nitrogen is way more stable than in the raw manure. So if you're going to broadcast this on a surface and you're going to incorporate in the same or the day after your spread, very little uh, nitrogen is likely to leave the field. Whereas if you put a raw manure down, the potential for nitrogen to leave that field, it's very high in the first 24 hours. So you can lose quite a bit of your nitrogen by doing that. Now, what has been found with the, some of the research that has been done? Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's not a lot of uh, research data out there uh, because a lot of this material is new, is within the last five years or so that this has been, uh, has been studied and been used. And then in the US, there is very little done, if you much at all. But what has been done usually is on high value crops, uh, like tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, cabbage, uh, because they're much more sensitive to, to nutrients and, and you wanna maximize their use. Um, so, and what we are finding is when you're using those in, in these crops, uh, they, the use of organic mineral fertilizer usually produces higher yields than if you're using manure alone or fertilizer alone by applying the same amount of nutrients. In other words, what it means is that you have this uh, synergistic effect by mixing those two nutrient sources, you end up getting much higher yields than if you were just using each nutrient alone. And in for corn, uh, it's, it's substantial amount of increases. For example, in some studies, they have found as much as 57% more yield when you use this organic mineral fertilizer compared to chemical fertilizers. Uh, they also have reported that plants are much healthier uh, there are taller plants, a much thicker stock, uh, which would help 
in case of high wind, uh, especially as you're close to harvest, when that plant is drying, if there's a heavy wind, it could cause a lot of lodging. And if you have a thicker diameter in your stock, that could also help uh, improve that tolerance to, to wind erosion and, and wind damage to the crop. Uh, and because of there is organic matter with this fertilizer, there is reports that is showing uh, that the soil that receives these treatments have increased the abil uh, ability to hold available water. So it increases the, the water that the crop can use during the growing season. Um, small grains, again, um, there is some significant uh, yield increases with the small grain uh, of many different kinds. And the only thing where we are not seeing any benefits from using this is in forage crops. Um, and this could be because when you're looking into producing a crop for forage, we're not waiting that long for uh, grain starting to, to fill uh, uh, to full maturity and dry. And probably a lot of the nutrients that the crops remove uh, before they reach physiological maturity uh, is still within comparable range between those two sources. And therefore, I think that's why you're not seeing forage crops showing some advantage of this use of technology. Uh, for the difference between those two types, um, here we have that produce, produce that has um, the two different sources distinctly visible. So this one we're observing that it has these lower releases of the nutrient, but it has a higher residual effect. We still see a benefit of using this type of fertilizer even after two years after we have applied. Whereas for the fused source where only one product is observable, um, it's a faster nutrient release and has very low uh, residual effect, probably because a lot of the nutrients is available in that first year or so, and then start seeing much lower availability in the second year and likely no availability at all on the last year. So again, this is a new technology. Uh, very few studies have been done uh, on, on main grain crops like corn, soybeans. Uh, but what you have seen with the tests that are being done, there are some very significant yield improvements that we can get from these fertilizers. Um, and again, we still have to do some more research to fully understand why that is. Uh, it could be linked to some synergistic effects of chemical fertilizer being available right away, and then this organic source is available a little slower. Um, but again, there's potential for uh, a, a lot of change in how we manage fertilizer, especially chemical fertilizer in our fields.